Hey guys, uh, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be answering or hopefully providing you enough information to answer a question on what is the best soil mix or substrate for Venus flytraps. Are we going to be looking at uh, peat moss mix, either with silica sand or perlite, or long fiber sphagnum moss? So let's go ahead and jump in and see which one of these might be best for you. All right, guys. Um, so I got some visual representations here with me today. I got my um, my UK sawtooth Venus flytrap, and then I got my um, my typical over here uh, in in my peat moss mix. Just first um, some visuals, um, and to kind of talk about the differences between the two um, substrates and mixes. But the main focus of today's video is going to be these two guys right here. We're going to be talking about the differences uh, between uh, peat moss and then long fiber sphagnum moss. I'm going to explain to you real quick what the difference is between these two substrates. Uh, what they are and then we're going to jump into pros and cons of each one um, so you can kind of decide which substrate is best for you. Alright guys, real quick before we jump into talking about these two different substrates, I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you so much for supporting my dream and opening a carnivorous plant nursery. Uh, please like this video, uh, share or subscribe to my channel. Those things are uh, incredibly helpful to me. They're extremely supportive. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for being here, um, checking out my content. I'm hoping that this uh, video today answers some of your heated questions in regards to which substrate uh, you want to use for your Venus flytrap as a beginner. Um, so don't forget to like, like the video guys, subscribe to the channel, share this. Um, so thank you so much again. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So real quick guys, I'm going to try to do my best to kind of explain to you what um, peat moss is. Let's start there. So I'm going to be explaining um, sphagnum peat moss. There are different kinds of peat mosses out there, um, but I prefer to get a sphagnum peat moss just because I know where it came from and I know that it came from sphagnum moss. So basically sphagnum peat moss um, is basically, it used to be this stuff, right? It used to be sphagnum moss that grows and what happens is it grows over and over and over over periods of, of many, many years and it eventually turns into basically a soil that grows underneath that's layered underneath the sphagnum moss the, the live growing sphagnum moss and what they do is they they take it out of these huge pits where all of these grow in these giant bogs um, and they got and you have this this peat moss now obviously this has perlite and sand in it um, but if you take just the the brown soil part of this then you have just the peat moss and that actually comes without perlite um, in most cases if you're just buying the the peat moss mix um, but do look forward to say sphagnum now long fiber sphagnum is basically the the moss that's just dried out right so this is still this is actually really close to being the live moss it's just been dried out so this is the stuff that you'll find on top of those bogs um and, and this will this can be harvested alive and then dried out a lot of people like to grow their own sphagnum moss um, and then dry it out for for use of substrates so that's kind of what the difference is between the two there are different peat mosses out there uh, made out of different mosses um, and i don't really know a lot about those mosses so i like to stick with just the sphagnum peat moss so so really the substrate technically are, are both kind of the same thing they're just sort of at different points uh, in their life cycle this one's older and it's turned into more of a dirt where this one is still alive or not alive but it's still uh, kind of in its natural form and but it's just dried out from being alive so one of the things I want to talk about I'm gonna show you this real quick here guys I did some surveys okay so I did a YouTube survey you guys probably saw that um, I'll throw the, the results of that up here. Um, you can see I had 93 total votes, um, long fiber sphagnum moss. Um, I asked everybody, uh, what substrate do you use? Do you use long fiber sphagnum moss? Or do you use peat moss? Or do you use something else for Venus flytraps? So um, the results from the YouTube survey was 93 total votes. 33% um, of people said long fiber sphagnum, uh, which was 31 votes. And then um, peat moss had 65% for a total of 60 votes. Uh, other was only two. So um, I actually did another uh, survey on social media. Um, I got 89 total votes in that survey. 24% uh, of people said um, long fiber sphagnum moss, which was a total of 21 votes. Uh, peat moss mix was 61 votes for 69% total. Um, and then other was 3% of, and which was only three votes. Uh, one person did say that they used the bone of their enemies for their Venus flight traps. Uh, and that came out at 1% of the total. I thought that was pretty funny and, and creative. So, um, but anyway, uh, so if you take the total combined, I have got 179 total votes. Um, I have the Piedmont mix is at 121 total votes, which is 
the long fiber sphagnum moss was 52 total votes at 29 percent and other was at five votes um, which was only three percent of the total votes uh, so what it really comes down to is only one person actually uses the bone of their enemies which is really really sad and that's probably all we need in this video we'll talk to you guys later all right just joking so um what what this basically tells me is that 68 percent of people are going with peat moss 29 percent of people are going with long fiber sphagnum moss and then only five or only three percent of people are going with uh, something else so it tells me that and these were both in communities where there's a lot of uh, carnivorous plant growers uh, so i think the important thing to note here there is that a lot more people are using peat moss uh, than long fiber sphagnum moss but um, before you use that information to decide what you're going to use let's actually talk about um, the pros and cons of each because it's actually kind of interesting seeing um, some of the information that i found kind of searching throughout forums um, asking questions on social media platforms uh, looking at YouTube comments um, there's kind of a lot of information out there in regards to what people like and don't like about the two mixes so we're gonna start off with talking about um, long fiber sphagnum moss so we're gonna go over some of the pros um, one of the things that that's really interesting is uh, they don't really take much of a hit when you repot them uh, once you repot them in this mix uh, they actually do a really really great job of uh, just kind of taking off where they left off, right? So uh, you don't lose a lot of pitchers. Um, they stay really healthy, or I'm sorry, not pitchers. You don't lose a lot of fly traps. Um, they stay really healthy um, and they just kind of take off right where they left off, which is pretty cool because sometimes there's some ill effects if you plant them in the peat moss. Um, another thing to, to point out too is that, and this is probably one of the biggest factors in, w in whether or not you're gonna decide which substrate you use. Um, but the, the, the long fiber sphagnum moss is actually going to make your plant grow significantly faster. Um, based on all the data that I've collected from numerous people, including some really, really um, reputable growers, uh, they get results that are two to three times faster growing in long fiber sphagnum moss when um, the plant is in the growth stage. So when it's actually getting bigger, going from a young plant to an adult plant, the long fiber sphagnum moss actually gives it much more of a growth boost. So that's something to really consider. Um, now let's talk about the cons. There's actually, ironically, because there's some really cool pros, but the cons is actually kind of super extensive here. So the cons of long fiber sphagnum moss is um, it's expensive. Um, it's significantly more expensive than peat moss. It's going to cost you a lot more. So if you have a lot of plants that you're growing, um, it's going to cost a lot more to repot these plants um, just because the amount that you're going to pay for this long, this long fiber sphagnum moss is significantly more than what you're going to pay for a peat moss mix. Um, the other thing is um, repotting them. And this is probably the biggest con of long fiber sphagnum moss is repotting them is a huge pain and it's super time consuming. The reason is, is these Venus flytraps have these nice long um, roots that like to go really deep. And the problem is, is this long fiber sphagnum moss really wraps itself around those roots um, and it makes it almost impossible to separate the root from the plant or from the sphagnum moss and you end up ripping the roots up a little bit. Uh, so you can damage your plant and in order to not damage your plant, it's a really kind of time consuming process. Um, it can be kind of frustrating. So if you have a lot of Venus fly traps and you have to do some repotting and you're using this long fiber sphagnum moss, it's going to be kind of a tedious process. Um, so that's definitely something to consider um, when you're when you're deciding which substrate that you want to use. Um, watering is super tricky with long fiber sphagnum moss. Um, it does seem, um, based on a lot of data um, from the community, that root or crown rot is often often more prevalent with long fiber sphagnum moss. Um, and it's a little bit trickier to get the right water levels um, with this substrate. Um, it doesn't go through as fast, it sits a little bit longer. So um, that can be tricky if you're not really good or you're a beginner grower. Um, learning the water aspect of this can definitely be tricky. Um, when the substrate gets dry and even when it's wet, it's super light. And I know that's kind of a weird um, thing but if you have if you have children in your home or if you have pets um, it's it's really easy for them to bump a table and knock these plants over or for you just to kind of you know move your hand the wrong way and knock a plant over they don't have any weight in the bottom um, when you use just the long fiber sphagnum moss so so that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting um, con that I hadn't really considered too much um, but it's something that you might want to consider if you have lots of animals or, or children running around now I will say with that being said that I have seen a lot of people and I believe the way that this one is planted as well is it does have 
um, so a peat moss mix in the bottom to give it a little bit of weight and then the the top half is all long fiber sphagnum moss so maybe that's a way to counter that um, and a way to also cut down on expenses because you're only using half the amount that you need um, but so that's an interesting way to maybe maybe counter that it doesn't long fiber sphagnum moss doesn't hold up as long or as well it'll actually break down in usually about a year and you have to replant your 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 uh, venus flytrap uh, where with peat moss it doesn't really break down um, it will become compact over time so usually two two and a half years you do need to replant um, but with peat moss it's going to break down a lot faster and you do have to repot it a lot um, sooner than you would with peat moss and the problem with that is is that like we've already discussed repotting is a huge pain um, with long fiber sphagnum moss so so there is that um, that's pretty much all the cons um, if you guys know can think of anything else throw something in the comment a pro or a con what you like what you don't like um, but we're going to go ahead and jump over to peat moss now. Um, now that we've talked about long fiber sphagnum moss, let's talk about um, some of the pros of peat moss. So one of the biggest pros is it's very affordable, guys. You can buy a bag of peat moss uh, for 10 11 bucks. You can buy a huge bag. You can get a bag of perlite for 12 to 15 bucks, um, And then you can get some sand for, for pretty affordable. And with that combination, you're going to be able to repot a ton of plants. I'm talking probably like 20, 30 plants of like this size with that mix so you can probably buy that once a year and you're good to go 30 40 dollars and your planting mix is done for the year whereas 30 40 dollars with long fibers sphagnum moss if you're getting the good quality stuff is probably going to run you seven eight plants tops um so that's that's a pretty significant difference in terms of of price and cost um so the the watering with peat moss is a little bit easier it's it's easier to know when you need to put more water in um, and it's easier to maintain water levels and the water actually goes through the plant a little bit easier um, so you have less risk of root and crown rot so if you're a beginner grower that's something to really strongly consider um, root and, and crown rot is a is a really common killer of venus flytrap so maybe that's something that you want to consider um, as a beginner grower that, that peat moss might be a little bit better if you're having problems watering your plant it holds up longer, right? We already talked about this. This is gonna hold up two, two and a half years um, before you need to repot where long fibers sphagnum moss, you're looking at about a year, maybe uh, 15 months or so before that starts to break down um, and you need to replace it. Another pro of um, the peat moss is uh, repotting. Um, repotting and um, getting the, the substrate off the roots is super easy. All you have to do is take your pot out of your plant or take the plant out of the pot, sorry about that, dip it in a little bit of distilled water and watch that peat moss just fall off. Um, something you cannot do. The, the untangling process with the, the long fibrous sphagnum moss is a nightmare. Uh, peat moss is super easy, just kind of dip it a little bit um, and you're good to go. Um, so that's kind of a huge um, a pro for that. Um, one of the cons, um, we'll talk about the cons now. Uh, the cons of peat moss is your plant's just gonna grow slower. Um, so if, you're, if your focus with your plant is to um, have uh, really, really quick growth, so if you're reselling um, and this is your business, then maybe long fiber sphagnum moss makes more sense. Um, but if this isn't your business and you're, you're able to be patient, um, use peat moss, uh, mostly because you're not, it, there's less chance you're gonna kill your plant, there's less chance of crown and root rot. Um, it's gonna grow a little bit slower, but at least it's gonna be safer. So if you're a beginner grower and you're not super experienced, um, probably peat moss makes more sense. Um, even though it's going to grow a little bit slower. Um, I think that's that's kind of it, guys. So um, I think really what it comes down to, um, I get this question all the time about what do I use? Do you use, do you use peat moss? Do you use sphagnum moss? Personally, I've always been a proponent of, of peat moss. Um, I use a peat moss mix. I use peat moss, silica sand, and perlite. I've had a lot more success with that. In the past, I haven't had as much experience, and I've had I have kind of struggled with the water levels um, in 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 sphagnum moss, the long fiber. But I think the problem is is that I just don't have as much experience using it. Um, the I know a lot of reputable growers like to use this the long fiber sphagnum moss, and guys, honestly, like maybe that is because they just want it to grow faster. It doesn't mean that it's an easier medium to grow your plant in. If you're a beginner and your focus is just to keep your plant alive, I strongly suggest going with the peat moss mix. Um, the peat moss mix is gonna give you the best chance to keep your plant alive. Um, but if you're a very experienced grower, um, go with the long fiber sphagnum. Um, it, it'll, it's gonna grow faster, it's gonna be, you're gonna have to have less patience uh, watching your plant grow, um, but just be prepared for the struggle with uh, repotting. 
uh, simply because uh, pulling these roots out of long fiber sphagnum moss is, is truly a nightmare. Um, I've had to do it several times and it's always really a frustrating process um, and most of the times what ends up happening is I end up damaging the roots um, just because I get super impatient. Um, obviously the nicer the, the fly trap I'll be more patient but um, yeah you, you can definitely damage the roots. So, uh, so what do you guys think? Uh, throw some information into the comments. Um, um, let us let me know um, what 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 substrate that you guys use. Uh, let me know the pros and cons. Is there something I miss? Is there something that you don't agree with? Uh, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Uh, which which substrate or soil mix do you use for your Venus flytrap? Um, but yeah, guys, uh, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm I'm still working on. Uh, starting my own carnivorous plant nursery and uh, you guys watching this uh, video being here and supporting that uh, is fantastic and I greatly appreciate it so uh, like this video subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video